Hey, Dr. Brad, good morning. Cheers. Do little. It's always a great pleasure. It is. Same for me. Um, we begin again. So uh, I just uploaded yesterday's. Episode 2098, we're sitting in here. Is that, what? that was a good talk yesterday. I enjoyed it. That was your brilliant idea. No, but the, the thing that was brilliant about it was to get, cause me to understand um, the nature of uh, the nature of uh, your objection to the uh, conspiracy theories of the right. That was that was a great um, clarification for me. Could you tell that for the audience with, if you thought about it? I don't understand the question. Could you explain what you came to understand for the oh, audience? Yeah, the the issue is this is that um it's like this, it's like so I ignore it. And so I watched that movie and I, I ignored the first part because it's like, okay, that's not that meaningful to me because I regard it as uh noise. Whereas Kurt sees it as uh you're you're creating dissonant waves in front of the information which is loaded in the movie which is actually useful and real and you're packaging it in a in a coating of nonsense that is going to cause people to shy away from it shattering any potential for uh realization of the value inside mm -hmm. does that sound accurate yeah, you're always right i tell you this is the way I am. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I noticed, I, I wish I had shut up a little earlier. I felt like I had to keep going through and um, uh, reiterating the path we've gone through. But I left thinking I should have shut up about 15 minutes earlier. Anyway. No, it turned out good, though. And... Um... It's interesting watching the uh, the the memes coming out about uh, the left now when they're anti free speechism. They are really un unbelievably uh, outraged. They're doubling down. It's just them doubling down. That's what it looks like. They become more outrageous and outraged. <clears throat> So, uh, so you know, it, if I think about it from their perspective, which I have to work at, by the way, <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, they get their feeling of truth from social construction and emotion, right. and emotional confirmation, um, mm -hmm. verbal uh, expression, and social construction. In other words, everybody agrees with you. So because they do, they can they perceive everybody else is doing so. That's what you're doing. You're doing it back right at me. And and the interesting function anyway, is Anyway, you said who's you? Everybody that's not the left. Right, exactly. Does it because that's how it's done. That's how it's done. Everything is done this way. And so the 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 really interesting part is when you argue with them, you're trying to do it. And yeah. so that's what that's the Kurtz of Kurt's main objection to this this uh conspiracy theorism. You're just trying to be a leftist and you suck at it. You suck at it. You suck at it. You're so bad at it. And then it's like, does that make sense? Yeah. Because it goes like this in my my construction of the world. So we start over. Here's the origin. That's the absolute truth. Extending increasing um uh inflationary language yes. and, and construction and the left is over here mm -hmm. the nazis are about right here and the conspiracy theorists are about right here yes and you're just you're just a shade of the of the glory that you could be if you would just be a leftist instead because you cannot hold a candle to them and their their monstrosities no i keep saying don't play their game because we're not good at it I mean, the one argument that they've been correct about is the left can't mean. Right? Why is that? <laughs> um, for the same reason, is they don't they don't see the irony. 
Well, they they don't they they can't. Oh, they, they can't see irony. Right, they don't understand that that what they that their emotional consistency, which I realize is a problematic term for some people, but their tendency to maintain an emotional state by any kind of verbal or social construction right, is uh, in order to justify however their emotional reactions. Um, they, they're so hung up on that that they can't, they, they're not like us. We look at it and we see this is really what's going on and we see what they're going on and the contrast is ironic. Right, so we can make these memes, or I, I don't, but because I have a terrible sense of humor. But uh, you know, the right is really good at it, precisely because they see the duality. The uh, the left doesn't, because they're they're inflated and conflated. So there's no con there's no uh, they can't mean because they ne they actually can't tell the difference between the emotions and reality in order to identify the contrast, <laughs> which is what makes the irony. Right, I mean. <laughs> It's so fucking it makes, the, obvious, it makes right? the guys on this side laugh. Right. We look at this stuff and it's really funny. And it's like, you know, the NPC meme is true. You know, the Karen meme is true. Right. I mean, th these things are true. You know, they just call us bad names like evil and hateful and Nazis. Right. It's the same thing all the time. But they can't and they can get engaged in ridicule. Right, which is again emotional consistency, but they can't mean because they can't show the duality, which is the irony that comes from the the difference between what they say and what they really do. So it's you know it's it, the fact that they can't mean is just another one of those things along with uh, uh, what is a naxalt axalt and right, and uh, conflating truth and and approval. It's just the fact that they can't meme is another exhaustively Indicator. demonstrated, right? Exhaustively demonstrated um, uh, uh, piece of evidence that of, cog of their cognitive differences. They really are a herd. And, you know, I mean, there's places, uh, a herd is basically a prey animal. Yes. And so they act like a prey animal, which is completely sensible when you see it. It's just that the prey animal doesn't have a temper has a temporal existence right they live in the moment in the experience and the emotion and in the herd and they gather their information that way and it's actually a very relaxing way of living life when you're not having to do the work that conservatives do which is a which is a predator animal and we look at the world as how what the fuck's going to happen here Am I going to get killed? Am I going to be able to protect my territory? You know, are we going to run out of resources? And what you don't realize is the female herd, the female and the herd, they're they're they don't they aren't conscious of it because for all intents and purposes, we're gravity. Right. It's, it's, uh, they don't the the, the the it's the the recipro reciprocal way of looking at the sex, the sex herd and herd prey. Uh, uh, pack predator male, right? The whole thing to look at that is really obvious. Is th that what they're really saying is the men will take care of it? Well, they're not Gravity. saying that, that never occurs to them, but that's the byproduct of what it is nature evolution couldn't afford to have them be aware of this, right? It had to be instinctual, so the instinct is produced by ignoring time, right. Whereas in men, we don't get to ignore the fucking time. We ignore, yeah, well, they've got to worry about the babies constantly, right? It never gets off their, it's never off their radar, right? And that's the burden of what they do is that, right. it, you know, they're in a they're in a, a in a jogging marathon, the the feminine left, right? And we're we're the problem is we're in sprints where you can get killed, right? And, <laughs> You're right. And 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 once you realize this, of course, we know this because. We know we know I'm not using an analogy because we know this is actually what the brain is doing, right? It, that that's what it's really doing, and that's why we behave this way. It's not a it's not social, it's not cultural. It's that the brain actually works this way for for male and female biases and the overlap between them. So I'm not telling a story that it's analogy. I'm doing an explanation when using some some 
some example cases to illustrate the explanation. But neurologically, that's what's making us different is uh, slight variation hormones, which cause vast adaptive differences in neurological association. Right. But, you know, why do we expect liberals to be sane? <laughs> You know, it's like would they have you know family and church, okay, great, but pol economy and polity, that's like they're they're intrinsically incompetent. I mean, not all of them, obviously. <laughs> you just insulted yourself. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, I'm defending <laughs> against the insults. It was a preemptive. <laughs> yeah, trying to, try to launch a preemptive strike, you know, defend myself against <laughs> the Naxals that come out. But I mean, you, you, that's really the thing, right? Uh, they have experience, experience over consequence. Um, in those time, right? In time versus overtime, experience versus consequence. Um, consumption over capitalization. Uh, 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 Evidence versus social construction. I mean, the right, and so you get Naxalt versus the Naxalt Axalt versus distribution, right? You get that perception of the world, right? And uh, you get the whatever one we just mentioned there, which you know herd versus herd prey versus uh, uh, pack predator, and you know these things are just an evolution of it. The thing, the only thing that's weird, which is what we're trying to solve, is that we don't know it. We don't know what we don't know. This is the case, which is what you and I are trying to see. We're not. We, no, we, we, yeah, we don't. Um, we're unaware to it or or realize it is the, yes. is, is the behave in a manner that is consistent with the understanding that this is the way it is. Yes, that's and, all. And, it's like, and, and the so weird part is, articulation is is all that's required, and you're working on that. And, and the weird part is look like so. The conservatives are stupid enough to assume the left will learn. <laughs> and the left is stupid. Wait, enough. wait, and other fairy tales. And other fairy tales, right? <laughs> and the left is stupid enough to assume they're right. Right? I mean, it's just this, in other words, they're, they're correct, right? Oh, they think they're correct. They yes, think yes. they're correct. And it's just like, well, you're correct in your fucking household, or maybe your little village mom, mom but what you're talking about doesn't scale you know i'm not sure like this the uh if we've seen what happens with the um spartans if you scale the masculine right uh, the, the the difference is the spartans can last for a while right but you've got to find that compromise that compromise looks like classical liberalism it does not look like democratic socialism Socialism or communism. The compromise already is classical liberalism. The problem is that, you know, we've loosed women from childbearing and the consequences thereof. And so we've lost the, what do you call that? What's the, 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 the scale? We've lost the, the balance. Uh, the balance scale that allows us to, um, to have in. To have natural incentives that reinforce our neural economy. So now our natural incentives and our neural economy are out of whack. And of course, you know, what we're talking about is population, uh, population collapse because of it and uh, civilization collapse because either we allowed women in it, women and the feminine cognition into the politics at all, or because we have failed once having allowed them and we have failed to adequately suppress the natural criminality of the female mind to the feminine mind um, so it, to the it, same degree suppress the male it, it seems like we're stuck in some rat utopia exactly population collapse is uh expected then yeah i know the, the thing is uh, some of us would like to assist in the process of collapsing large portions of the population and creating skull pyramids by doing so. Uh, but you know uh, it's not necessary. <laughs> it's it's it's, it's a nice over. idea. Oh come on it, everybody if the left can have their utopian fantasies. Yeah fan, fun mine. fantasies, right? <laughs> That's right. Oh my
<laughs> I'm hanging out with the barbarians among us. <laughs> I just need to, I need to like, I need a, like a red button, like call Eli. <laughs> with a, it has to be under glass. It has to be under glass and you know, with a hammer it right near it. Press the button, have Eli come in, explain the situation and says, well, we, we need skull pyramids, you know. It's time. He's, he's always going to reduce it to the shortest, the smallest number of words necessary to convey the most you know, unpleasant truth. <laughs> but I, I just need a red button, a red Eli Armin button. Because otherwise I get in the bad position of having to say it myself and it's just, I'm trying to. Right, so there you go. That would be like, um, you, you see the guys on, they do um, like radio shows. And they'll have buttons that have, you know, some like audio thing okay. under. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you would, you would, you would have an Eli explanation so that you don't sound like the most rabid animal in the room, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm using, I'm taking that position to illustrate that that rabid animal does exist, right? I mean, it is there, right? And, and you know what? They're quiet. <laughs> They're real quiet until they get real, real loud. <laughs> oh, How did we get? How did we end up here? We were no, having a serious conversation. We just <laughs> we just covered the the origin of the differences in political uh, polit you know, political biases pretty thoroughly, actually. Well, what was interesting? So, you, if you look at it, um, so from eighteen fifty, say, classic liberalism is it is you know the English Empire is not <clears throat> the British Empire is ethical still. Well. They're still ethical in 1850. It's classic liberalism all the way. They're just right on the money. And then it's like about, I say, 1885 is when they made Nathan Rothschild uh, Baron. And that is the that is the sea change, which is the entry of the feminine cognitive bias into the polity by introjection right. into the aristocracy. Well, uh, who's the uh, Disraeli? Yep. And the, so, the, what are they? They let the Jews in in eighteen. And this, we've got Disraeli and Rothschild. And what, so, what happens because of these things is <clears throat> is be, the be, people don't understand. It's one of those things that you gotta understand the value of our ancestors uh, in uh, traditions. That did that don't make sense to us today, but right. if you, if you consider uh, want of money uh, as uh, a sin, as in, in other words, if you were worried about money, you were a failure. Yes, you were aristocracy, right? This is just something that was. Um, but when you do that, that led to this the signaling as morality. Right. In other words, they led to signaling as excellences. Here's uh, what works. You know, right, right here. Right. But the problem is, is that once you had the Jewish restoration, you brought in the sense that good was profit. Uh, in other words, in other words, it wasn't justice. It, 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 that's what completed the transition from aristocracy to the the new uh, the new uh, nouveau riche aristocracy, the Whigs. To what I consider the post aristocracy, which is the immoral elites that come about because of Disraeli, the um, and the financialization of the empire. So, well, I mean, and, and I want to I want to make clear that the financialization of the empire is is one of the reasons it came about, not because the collapse came about. Um, but specifically because of the conflict between the in financial malincentives of the empire and the moral uh, incentives of the aristocracy. Now, some India, which I had one of these fucking guys yesterday, um, will come back and say, oh, the English were evil. Okay, so if you align, you know, the problem is you're saying that compared to what? Right? If you compare them to everybody else, no, they're not. They're way better than ever. They're, 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 to say something is 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 not perfect and is still bad is not saying it is the best, right? And so the uh, the the English got rid of slavery 
because they considered him moral. Right? The, uh, most of what the British did was because the aristocracy um, began to signal that this is immoral, uh, which was which is another way of saying we don't we're too high minded and we were too rich to do those peasanty things anymore. Right. And so they're not taking into, into account that so, fuck the Indian guy is still driving me crazy. You just try Indian the Indian feminine tendency to try to blame everybody else is as deep rooted as the American feminine tendency to try to blame men for everything. And I just don't know how to, I mean, you can't overcome it. It's like their religion. Right? It's it, become, it, like it is. It's become their religion. And it's just sad because I'm trying to talk to him like, well, there's like, he's like saying, well, you know, back in the seventies, America did this. Well, back in the seventies, you were an ally of the Soviet Union. Now, when you stop, then we said, oh, great. Now you have, now you're going to grow up. And, you know, now, of course, we view India as a peer. Right? And we just, it's a great civilization. It's got democratic systems and they're just maturing and they don't have hostile ambitions against third parties. And so they're just like us. Right. So we think of them, we think of India beneficial. But then he's trying to bring up all this historical stuff. It's like, you know, you're just trying to be like women. It's like, you know, and the reason you're doing that, the Indians do that, is because they don't want to take responsibility for cleaning the house. Or as George, what does George and Peterson say? Clean up your yeah, room. Clean your room. Clean your room. And, I, and so people have accused me of saying, clean, clean your civilization. Well, um, right, because what it's what, really what I'm saying uh, is that, you know, I'm like, you, you don't want the responsibility for doing stuff. So you tell these stories in your head. That the condition is everyone else's fault. Hmm. Oh, you're just being a female and blaming the men for it, right? When the answer is, what could you do to change the condition of the Indian subcontinent? Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the rate they're doing it is pretty damn impressive to me. My whole thing is their filth, right? I just want them to fix the filth problem. But they are working on it, right? It's not like that. I mean, to, to say we, we give the Chinese credit for, you know, what they did in 30 years. But, you know, I mean, India is doing the same thing. You know, I mean, they're not doing as fast because they don't have the Red Army. You know, the China's got the Red Army. The armies make things possible to change politically faster. And India is not homogenous like China. Right. It doesn't have uh, you know, zillion year old bureaucracy, you know, it, it, it doesn't have the Red Army. What it's got is a religion and a culture and a sense of unity that allows them to want to work together to produce a virtuous good. And the truth is their ethics are largely moral. I mean, Hinduism is a beautiful religion. Here. A little effeminate, but it's beautiful. So they keep, they have this fucking want to blame other people. It's like, Dude, you've been walked on by every. I mean, if a if people can get to the sub Indian continent, they walk all over you. You, you got to look in the mirror and figure out why that is, right? If you keep getting your ass handed to you, and you keep making bad decisions, choosing the Soviets over the West, or or uh, mm. you know, or if you keep you know, your petty infighting among your nobles, and right, you choose to double down on. Uh, uh, mysticism rather than empiricism. If you do all those things, you got to say, well, who, it's, it, it, whose fault is it that you get walked on, right? We, the, the thing we learned from colonialism is, oh, it's totally unprofitable. <laughs> that was an expensive mistake. <laughs> that was a really expensive fucking mistake. Um, contra, conversely, and this is the horrible part, uh, Genocide is incredibly profitable. Yeah. Right? That's the other thing we learned. We don't want the difference is, is that morally we we got a problem with more doing genocide. Um and so that means we can't do conquest and we can't do colonization. Uh oh. But what we can do is uh baiting into baiting into goodness versus baiting into hazard, which is what we 
done since the Second World War. We paid a high price to beat the world. I'm sorry, I've been on a rant now though, about India. We need to walk on okay. That. So this baiting into hazard, baiting into hazard reminds me of the book. Um, what's it called? The fellow wrote he, his job was to um, make get third world countries to take out loans that were uh, they could never pay back in order to bait them into the hazard of it. And well, uh, okay, so th there's there's two ways of doing this. There's uh, Baiting you into the hazard, so that I, which is what America does, and so that we can forgive your debt if you become good citizens, <laughs> right? Um, okay. Right. So that's the American way. The world, uh, is it not the World Bank? The World Bank. Yeah. Um, so the whole idea is you can get your loan forgiven if you achieve these ends. But you won't get your loan again forgiven, and you won't get more loans if you don't. So is that really is that baiting or bribing, or is it? I understand that that both of them are so close. <laughs> so, so the answer is now. If it's like you've got, you're saying, okay, well, I've got to make sure you don't try to commit the suicide of communism, and so mm. we're gonna. We're going to bait you into not trying communism. Unfortunately, some people got there, but some people just went to socialism instead of communism or really socialist, democratic socialism, because mm -hmm. they believe that would work. And so they failed, basically all of South America, <laughs> except for maybe uh, anyway, basically all of South America. And... Uh, and so what we learned out of that process is uh, that keeps the communists away, but it still doesn't get you there. In other words, it doesn't get you to behave. What gets you there, trade? Right? That's the only thing that matters, right? Is, is once you've got enough trade, you can't mm. give it up. It's in a you know it's too rewarding to have mm. world trade. And so what the US did. Well, Britain created world trade, really. Mm -hmm. At least the Europeans, but certainly the British Empire did create world trade, mm -hmm. and um, they showed how to uh, how to make it work. Financial mm -hmm. financial innovations, uh, corporate innovations, financial innovations. I mean, the whole series of innovations up to the Industrial Revolution. Um, but what Americans said is, okay, this is the difference between American and British. Okay, this whole fucking colonialism thing doesn't goddamn work. So it's unprofitable. Actually, it's really unprofitable. I can't understand why Africa thinks it's profitable. Right? It's only profitable the way France is still doing it. But colonization is fucking expensive. So, so it, it just doesn't turn out. What you want, of course, is people to be able to be trade partners. Then it's profitable, right? For mm. both parties. But if you're like bearing all this cost of infrastructure development, it doesn't mm. pay off. Because what happens is as soon as they get enough wealth to be able to form anything, they just steal it all or they take it over, which they consider moral. And we look back and say, oh, well, I can't blame you, really. But, um, you know, it just still turns out to be a bad investment. So the, what we've learned is you've got to make trade. So the problem is, though, who pays now? In other words, the way we colonize today is we bait into trade which is good for everyone. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that's any different than making kids go to school so they aren't a dead weight on the uh, the dead weight on society, but I mean, it's insurance as much as it is anything else, but it certainly worked. So the problem is that uh, it worked until um, we tried to rescue China. Because we tried to rescue China, we ended up having such a cheap labor pool, an infinite and cheap labor pool that was confident. So we started throwing, um, we weren't throwing just dangerous things overseas, which you want. All industry over there. We threw everything over there. And that ended up being a problem because now they want to do to America what America did to Europe in the 1800s, which is America surpassed Europe as the industrial. I mean, by 1900, New York was more sophisticated. So. 
right? And Klaus Schwab is looking at them as the, uh, that's the way you should organize society. Well, I mean, who's, who came out about this? Uh, can you, you state his position so that I can clarify? World Economic Foundation. Right. Well, you say, oh, the, 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 essentially the, the, the Chinese social construction model is the appropriate model for civilization. So here, let me translate. All right. So previously, the communists tried to save money by militarizing the workforce. Right. So you pay soldiers a fixed and simple level, right? And you take the surplus uh, of their labor, organized labor, right? you've organized their labor, not by markets, but by military order to produce goods, commons, com commons, right? This, yep. is this is how you build commons. And so uh, that's great. So how? Do, why did that work? It worked because you have very low labor costs, and you have no competitive costs. Right. Right. And for for all intents and purposes, you need productivity, but you don't need profitability. In other words, the the cost of your inputs needs to produce outputs that are. That have more use value, right? In other words, how you ever you account for this? Right? This is this is the problem of economic calculation under a under a authoritarian economy. Right, it becomes very difficult to calculate anything without. You don't know what the real value of it is. Uh, yeah, you know, that's the whole thing. What does that word value mean? You don't. It's actually you don't know if you transform a resource plus its costs into a new resource, and if you have gained or lost. So what we found is that the, the Russians were bringing in iron, but the market value, in other words, the use value of the iron afterwards was less than the cost of producing. Does that make sense? Yes. So they were actually costing themselves rather than, than making a thing that was actually safe. We're adding value. Adding they were adding value. Okay. And, uh, uh, some because there's so many libertarians in our community, right? They under they're knowing that I'm please be aware, I know what I'm saying. I'm just taking a shortcut. Right? I'm just trying to get through my story because Kurt has a tendency of falling down little rat holes of explanation that are too uh, that provide too much detail and miss the fuck. And there the I lose the audience while I'm trying to make my point. So I'll go back to you. So the 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 point here is they militarize the work. What yep. did what did the Chinese learn from that? Their own experience in that is incentives and calculation. Uh, incentives are lost because you never by doing that you lose incentives, and by doing that you lose the ability to ec perform economic calculation. Yeah. All right. So those are the two problems. Um, so the, the, it's not a joke that the Chinese were ordering catalogs from America to figure out how to price goods. <laughs> it really happened. Um, it's not a joke that, you know, the, the, when the Russians say they would, we would lie to them of the government about what we produced and they would lie that they paid us. I have heard the story goes like this. They pretend to pay, we pretend to work. Yes. <sighs> So, and then they use violence to, so, so what the Chinese did is instead, as they learned from the Americans, they said, we can use debt mm. and we can maintain the incentives and maintain the calculation. The only question is, how far can we get away with this debt thing? Right, that's what they did. Well, I mean, they're doing on purpose what the Japanese and us do by accident. That's not really true. The Japanese did it by accident. Americans, the truth is we know exactly what we're doing. All right? We're inflating all this stuff, exactly what we're doing, and we're making them gamble that the uh, that that the strategic good that will be produced will be compensate for the necessary correct 
cost of the corrections that occur. In other words, I don't know what percent of people in government and administration comprehend that. Mm. I, right, I, I don't. I, I do know that economists and treasury people and etc. We do know that. We have people that can know that. We have people that know that. Well, wait, so, there, there's the issue here because I was work, pondering this as I was cooking my breakfast this morning, sir. Which is this? It's it's government by midwits. Yes. And so those people don't. They don't. That's they why have not been trained. They have an inadequate scope of uh, comprehension. Right. So they don't understand the the nature of what's actually occurring. They're focused on some little domain that is of uh, very temporal. They're herd like creatures. These are the betas. That's who's running the show. So uh, just for the <clears throat> audience's benefit, two factors. One is that. This is true also of bankers of the financial sector. And if I half believe this moron who's this FTX Bitcoin. Oh, bank, yeah. I half believe that he actually didn't understand. And the reason I half believe it is because so many other people in the financial sector have no idea what they're really doing. They're moving box X from position A to position B. In a long chain, yes, and right, so I, you, you, and the same thing is in the bureaucracy, the government bureaucracy. Everybody's moving a piece in the chain. That's and they have a window. Yes, but they may not understand. No, they the don't. Either sequence or its consequences or its externalities. They are right? looking only at their own incentives within the framework of their window. And that's all we can do, right? We can only not do what we know unless we're educated about what we may we don't can't know by it without direct experience, right? It's outside of our experience. So this is why complex systems break down, is because at some point the num everybody's it's like a rocket ship that makes a one degree error in course here and there and the, well it ends up in the wrong somewhere place. else. It ends up in the wrong fucking galaxy. It's not that they just miss the planet. They're in the wrong fucking galaxy because a little change here over this distance, right? This much time, it turns out to move, you know, a, a little change, a little change here changes this to this to this, right? I mean, it's a big fucking change over that distance of space or time. So that's what happens in all these organizations. People develop these little rules and it builds up this sort of cancerous Is it totally, network totally, of It stuff. reminds me. It reminds me of the works of Kafka, because that's what he wrote about. Yes, he did. He did write about that. <laughs> so, so you're. Should I? I said so. I think I lost my point again. Small so, changes so, so, okay. make big differences. Right. So there's a tendency to believe people in government can be better than they are. There's a tendency to believe people in the financial sector. Uh, certainly, again, I'll repeat, as economists, we're very aware of this. We're aware among ourselves what how error-prone we are. Because why? It's almost impossible to be right. And we're confronted with this reality that we're almost, except <clears throat> on, on very general patterns, we're going to be wrong. I mean, very near-term stuff or very long-term stuff. But anything yes. in the middle, which is what you want to make use of. So, so it, it, this and the same thing happens to idiots and the average idiot in the population. You think you understand this? Believe me, you fucking don't. And this is my problem with liberals: is they absolutely do not. You know, you can get a conservative to think in terms of. Well, I mean, I wish they should do that, but they can't. Whereas it's very hard to get a liberal to realize that they should do that, but they seem to think that the people can. And it's this concept of the failure of scaling that's ende in endemic in the feminine. So we go back to our, our original conversation about the uh, failure of the feminine mind to appreciate irony, to be able to make a meme. And it's like, I, I think about the... Um, the institution of journalism 
the institution of the academies as being heavily uh, leftist in their cognition. Yes. And I think the government employees are as well. I don't know if that's true, but I believe it to be it's so. True because what does conservative mean in this scale? It means scale of population and time. That's what it means, right? What is what does outcome orientation mean? What is the reason for it being the positiva of the liberals and the negative of conservatives? Well, positiva is very short term, but people who think in limits, they're looking at scale. So why do you think liberal humor is what it is and conservative humor is hyperbolic? Because hyperbolic is scale. So how many, just in this one conversation we're having, how yes. many examples have I given between that are demonstrated evidence of the behavior of male and female minds across the time-space continuum? We back up a step. Masculine and feminine, please. Masculine and feminine. Thank so you. Feminine, feminine, experiential, short-term, positiva, consumptive versus, I don't think I can do, repeat that because I wasn't tracking what I was saying. But the masculine, um, lo, um, not short-term, you know, long-term, outcome-based capitalizing, right? Those are negativa. two different things, right? Negativa, which is, it has to be negativa. Because you is have a to think it limits. It's it's limits. It is fascinating function. It's fascinating. It gains by negating that which sucks. Yes. You don't, it's a, it's a via negative, conservatism is via negativa. They're saying, just don't do the bad stuff. Where the left is saying, do the good stuff. I mean, it's not, you, 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 this is what I mean, but the difference of the masculine and feminine. It's amazing that we fucking get along at all. It's amazing we even speak, you know, and, and when, you, what, you know, it really is. <laughs> Oh, wait, because it goes to the it goes to the therapist going, Kurt, how does that make you feel, sir? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just turned my stomach. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh my. But it's it is. It's what's amazing is it does boil down to this. Boils down to this. I know I was talking to the judge yesterday because we were riding horses around, and uh he was telling his daughter that um I was I was employing the uh, horse training techniques on people, and not all people though. It's like this. I was making note of the fact: horse is a herd animal. It responds to pressure. You take away the pressure when he's doing what you want, okay? But men are more like dogs, and you have to throw rewards out, and he'll go chase the bone, and he'll. He's happy to do it, but it's like if you try to treat him like a horse, he is not going to be hanging with the program. Hey, hey, <laughs> Amanda had an enormous, hyper dominant, aggressive male, right? Way too big for the house. The yard is okay. big, but way too big, right? This is the kind of thing where you t you take the those that little plastic thing that lets you toss a. Toss a, a tennis ball. Take yeah. him out to the because she's one block from the the grade school or high school. All right, so while we would walk over there in the winter at the high school, take this freaking ball, and you could throw that ball for like an hour, and he would never get fucking tired. <laughs> right? I mean, just can't. You just and and so then we eventually she said, oh, "I got to get him over a farm." Right? Just, so she found a farm and wanted to take him. They already had another German Shepherd. The two males they had a blast. Right? So we got a smaller female. Well, I was glad because to be that male, I mean, you can't fuck how he doesn't know me. I don't feed him. <laughs> He's he recognizes the other male as problematic. Perhaps. Yeah, so uh, you know, I grab him, do the normal thing of grab him by the neck, push him on the ground, get him in his face, whatever. And I realize he's tolerating, but he's not submitting. Right. When dogs, I mean, 99% of dogs, unless there's some, you know, they're like, they're like, okay, I, I understand. This is, this is, who's who not? not him. <laughs> That's problematic. I'm like, well, I can't, you know, 
And then we go get the female, and she's wonderful, of course, but she's Amanda. And, of course, the dog absolutely loves her, and I wanted the dog, right? I mean, she's got the kids and the cat and whatever, and I want a dog, right? You know? No. <laughs> she's perfect for man and beast, anyway. There you have it. Glad she's okay. remarried and happy. Um, That's good. So it goes like this. So the, the, the via negativa sees the limits at scale. Right. It's why, like, when Trump talks, he's a great example. He uses hyperbole. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's what conservatives do. Well, that's what Kant was saying. Right. Is uh, what would it be if everybody did this? <clears throat> Kant, Kant's intrinsically conservative. Well, that's the political question. The mom's question is, how can I best get Johnny or Mary to do whatever? Or how can I best get what I want? Well, that's with how they think. Or how can I get, how can this unhappy person get what they want so I don't have to regulate them? I mean, just how the feminine mind thinks is so. Right, so I don't have to do what the man do to limit the bad behavior. Because then I'm in trouble, right? Because I got to apply dominance and force. And that could get me ostracized from the community which is why they don't do it, right? They, they want all this inclusive bullshit, right? Mm. So, but we look at stuff and we say, oh, fine, I don't care until, mm. right? So it's like, oh yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's noise to us, right? This is the problem. This is the problem with male tolerance for female behavior is that we have either evolved or learned, I don't know which, to treat women as noise. Because most of what they do is noise, right? It doesn't matter unless it's no longer it's signal. Mm. Right? At scale, at scale, we are, we are approaching that limit now because right. they right. overbalanced us in the polity. Right, and so that's what the problem is. Of course, the women think that the women aren't accounting for the collective consequences of their individual action, and when they do, they're not able to account for it. And so, I mean, I'm like, you know, don't, don't, you know, act like, well, we're going to get away with this because they ignore the male. Right? They just ignore the male. Whereas the males are thinking, at some point, you know, it's just better us to go back to slavery. Or I'm worse. sorry. Wait, or worse. Where's that button? <laughs> gotta get Eli, get my Eli button. <laughs> right? I mean, it's just because the guys are like, it's just because, you know, it's funny to watch the dating system is that. The, all the stuff women read into men that isn't there. Okay. Like you're up. Uh, like for example, this. All these men have evil plans. No, it just takes us a long time to figure out whether we actually like you or not. So we keep the door open, assuming that we'll figure it out. But we're not gonna. We don't sit there like you do, women, and cut the thing off at the first sign of negativity, right? Which is what they do, right? They cut the thing off at the first sign of you know, negativity because they'll obsess about it. And we just look at it as, I don't know, I mean, that's being a woman. Right? And you get along. And, right. I expect this kind of crazy. I expect this kind of nonsense. Right. And then you get to the point where you say, okay, when I wake up in the morning or after we have sex, God knows what, right? And I feel like I really am glad you're here. That's when I know I like you. Right. But how long does that take? Two months? Three months, four months, six months. You know the truth is, it takes all. Uh, it takes the amount of time it takes to just overcome all those things we said. It's just a woman, right? And that's what. So the women think there's some fucking devious plot here. No, we just have no idea, and we're just trying to make the relationship work because you're women and you're fucking nuts as far as we're concerned. So I just <laughs> want to figure out. And that's really what's going on. Um. And so it's funny to watch this thing here and there's this all this relationship stuff going in, all the stuff that women attribute to men. Whereas a guy's really simple. And she's they're like talking about us being um fearful. We aren't fearful, right? Things are work or not. Or we're um intimidated. We're not intimidated. Things are either expensive or not. Right? Uh uh, we're not, you're not, we're loyal and you're not. So are you're either loyal enough or not, right? Or devoted enough to compensate for your lack of loyalty. I mean, the women don't have loyalty; they have only devotion. 
So so the men are trying to go through that. How long does it take us to figure that shit out? Precisely too long. Yeah, it takes a long fucking time. So that's the value of friend groups, right? Is you've already settled that you've found people who are compatible by friend groups. And that's the value of dating in friend groups or through, you know, and directions of, and it's usually, we usually, you know, are very few direct uh, uh, directions, uh, in directions, in directions, dimensions different from uh from our friends right and same right. for who we married so i mean of course so i'm looking at dating so it's because people are fucking ignorant if you just told women this is how men work men we already know how women work we just don't like it right no and, no it's just projection of nonsense yeah it's projection of nonsense and the shit they women get in their head because they find it entertaining I mean, it's like, uh, you know, I know it does. Let's back up a step. It's like they don't get to select what is interesting to them. That's true. So their their bot finds it useful. Useful. Fun. We see that all the time. Why do they like bad guys? Because they're fucking interesting. I mean, it's the same reason we like, I mean, I liked computers, right? I always bring up the Harley example. Guys like Harleys, right? They We want the toys to play with, right? And it's different today because you know it's through most of history it's like who can i survive with <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> well I mean, excuse me who get, for the women who gets me out of the house so i have my own slaves instead of being my mother's slave now women is this women will find some oppressive narrative but that, that was the reason you got married i want my own children as slaves so i'm <laughs> I'm not my mother and father's slaves because this is our right. That's why you got married, but you want a sovereignty. And so, this is the Heinling's lesson is make sure women are seeking sovereignty. The man's job is to give it to them. Right? This is a rule I have in my head, and it's so fucking true. Right? When, how do I give this woman sovereignty? The sense of she has agency. Right? They talk about it as being safe, but it's, that's just the fearful version. Of the of the practical implementation, so you know you 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 get in the dating you listen to this dating stuff. It's like, well, I mean, the, for the man's perspective, he wants to get laid, and he wants someone to take care of him, and he's happy to. He's got to work anyway. I'd rather work and have division of labor, right, and have those kids to help with the labor, and have you know, and have somebody. I mean, because taking care of yourself today is pretty cheap. But taking care of yourself in the past, I mean, getting the food, preparing the food, maintaining your shelter, that was a lot of work. Well, I mean, also that you were doing physical or farming is not like hunter-gathering. Farming is fucking brutal work. And so th that made that, so the man, that's what he wants. He wants sex and that. Now, women, true, they want sex, but they want the other stuff more because it's just, well, today, I mean, what do you, what, what's the reason to have a, a, a marriage? You don't need it for sex. You don't need it for economics. You don't need it for friendship. Right? And then they do this the worst possible thing, which is these fucking dating sites, which mean you, you, you have no guarantee or insurance that the person and you are compatible. And you're going simply on what they look like and your fucking imagination. And so you go on a million dates and you start thinking the other sex is crazy. No, it's a sortition problem. Right? You've gone from You've gone from being at the bottom of a filter, right, right. where there's a very n small number of choices, but that you're compatible, to a bigger, wide filter. And you think, by the way, that you're farther in the selection process than you are, and you have more reach than you do. So who does this benefit? The people who are most capacity to fool, right? Hoes, right, on one hand, and Brad's, Chad's, Tyrone's, and they, what's his name? What's the... Brad, what's, <laughs> And Muhammad's right. That's not Muhammad. There's one Abdul, right? I mean, it's to their advantage because they're they're both hoes, right? Because they're, they're all. It's just fucking hysterical. You know, I can tell you from being uh, when when I put up my dating profile because this is back in two thousand nine, I guess two thousand ten. I put up and I said I just put some pictures of me and what a fairly accurate description, right? 
I like Carson was a little crazy because if you get divorced, you go crazy. Right? But, um, uh, but I put my Ferrari up there, and I was like, oh, <laughs> "I'm fish in a fucking barrel." All right. The problem is, is that you you end up being like all the girls have the swipe right, swipe left thing, right? They like they don't they have so many hits, but they're from mediocre guys. The problem from a guy hand has perspective is you have so many hits, and they're off of the course. Well, yeah, I mean the number of women that would directly say, "I need thirty five hundred dollars a month, and this is what I'll do for you." Oh, that's very direct. <laughs> it's not romantic at all, though, is it? It's when I went to Ukraine, I realized you do the opposite. Okay, <laughs> you dress down, you meet people through friends, right, and you meet ordinary. People so more know. bucolic methodology. It's just don't, you know, as you're s s s selling the dream, it's not going to create a contract. I mean, I have at least, I have more than two, but at least two friends that just, just, you know, a woman a day, maybe two, right? And it's endless because they're that kind of guy, right? Right, they finally get tired of it. Yeah, they get one that's perfect, right? And I actually know what that perfect type is, right? And um, yeah, they're hot, but it's the personality is very funny. It's a very small number of those women, right? And so they're very, very high value, but that's what they want. They want very, they want attractive, but very, very feminine. And you know there has to be an IQ match, right? There's some sort of IQ match. There. Um, that's who you get. I mean, so you look at NFL football players and go through their wags. You know, why we all friend. We know what the fucking answer is. It's not I'm a an amazing you know super bitch, right? It's I'm hot and I'm feminine. And femininity is the only scarcity oh, that yeah. has value to me. <clears throat> How did I get down that fucking rat hole? How did we get down? I let him rant. That's for well, the audience. I let him rant and see what happens because we go down some crazy rat warrens and just look around, and check it out. It, it, it's the, the, you know, it always bothers me when I go down some fucking rat hole and say, what the hell are we saying? And I, I'm always like, and I, then the answer is the truth is, I was like, I have to stop myself because, you know, every one of those rat holes, I can keep fucking going for three hours, right? And I just need to stop my catch myself. Right? And <laughs> like, like, and I'm like, wait, how did I get here? <laughs> hey, man, I've been laying bread. I've been dropping breadcrumbs the whole way. Yeah, well, I know. But I know I know I'm know. i being led by the nose. I don't really mind. You know? <laughs> it's part of the dance here we have. And the audience seems to fucking appreciate. They said, no, don't stop doing that. And I'm like, because that, that, that stuff really matters. And I'm like, okay, well. And so you don't know what the value of it is, because it is like what's interesting to the public. What's interesting to you may be interesting to the public momentarily. <laughs> I think what's interesting is how you, at least because this is the cons, the constant feedback I get, is you tie things together, Kurt. No, oh, sure. Tie all these things together, and so uh, it that's what those rat holes do, right? So I the rat to, hole is a connector way. There's a connector way, and there's all these side shoots that go right. to other places that it could be economics over here, right? It could be anything because it's all so connected. It's, it could be physics. Yes, it's all related. And you have drawn the relationship with this completion of the science. I just try to weave shit together because that's what creates legitimacy, right? It's survival, explanatory power, and survival across all this explanatory power. This is what that's how I know things are right, is when the explanatory power becomes very ridiculous because it's first principle. Anyway, so uh, I, I'm, I'm saying that because I, uh, I actually feel guilty every time I go down a fucking rabbit hole. But then I read that the audience Please. says, don't, 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 don't stop. And I'm like, well, you know. we have to stop. You have to stop when you, um, when you can completely exhaust the opportunity for, uh, of, of guilt-free exposition. True. As soon or as you my, become or, guilty, or, or, as soon as you or, feel guilty, you have to stop. You've exhausted yes. the opportunity. Yes. <laughs> That's about, that's, yeah, I'm an empty. you didn't have to tell me that. Now I know, right? It's like, one thing. <laughs> Now I'm aware of it. <laughs> Shit. 
<laughs> He's such an asshole. Um, I know. I so, know. so, but the other the other answer is that um, it's it's when I first when I'm when I'm uh, I've hit uh, the point I was trying to make and I've lost track That's of what it. the fuck I was what, talking. What was about. I do? Why why did I what, do this? What theme? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to explore a theme by weaving together for the audience this this whole set of connections and I've lost <laughs> I've lost the front of the where the hell did that come from? What's what's the point here? <laughs> Thankfully, you have a better uh, working memory than I do. I, I keep notes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I like uh, the breadcrumbs, man. I got to keep the breadcrumbs going. So what were we talking about? Oh my limits at scale. Oh yeah, the 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 the, the huge difference in um, sex, the, the, the vast sex difference differences in sex uh, cognitive. Uh, cognitive uh, difference between sexes and how, how vast it is and how pervasive it is and how right. it doesn't matter at small scale. Like it's actually right, anything because it's anything will go. And yeah. Well, not only that, it's, it's valuable. Like, you know, I, it's always the joke about, um, I would say some, you know, it's the mansplaining woman'splaining thing. So if you're in some like little group and you, you mansplain something, which is to give more, the the how to solve the problem when what the woman's mansplaining is is how people feel about it, right? Right? Or how are they going to feel about it versus how is the problem going to solve independent of how people you know people feel about it? Or how does this machine actually work so that you're conveying to the person how this machine works? And the woman's like, I don't I'll, I don't care. I won't understand anyway. And uh, I'll forget, even if I did understand, right? And, and care, right? I mean, she's like, that's not the point. I'm just expressing my frustration. I still want you to fucking do the VCR, right? I mean, they, they don't want to really know how the VCR works. They want to complain about the VCR so that you'll go fix the fucking VCR, right? I mean, it's, but that's just the, the comedic th version, but that's what mansplaining and woman'splaining are, right? right. So, so you just look at this and it's like, well, that doesn't matter at small scale. But it does when you develop the ability to organize populations at increasing, increasing scale. Like if women's women's behavior starts being difficult outside of a small business, and right. it starts becoming a family business, right? And it starts becoming really problematic in industry, and becomes catastrophic in politics, as because it's what's the difference is scale and time. So this, I'm going to point back to Disraeli, 1874, when he took office, is the introduction of the feminine cognitive style into the polity of the classic Western uh, yeah. liberalism. So, yeah, the, the, the thing I want to use here, I'd like to riff off what you just said, is that we, we tend to just, the tendency is to blame Jews, and I'm like... Um, it's the feminine cognition that's the problem. They just happen to practice it, right? I mean, it's like, well, you know, that was a that was um worth reiterating because it, it's it's not their fault. It's their specialization in that cognitive style. And so, given that we're the paternalia, right, the, the fathers, the, the people who deal in limits. If you don't constrain your women, you don't constrain people who think like women. It means you don't constrain your Jewish population you're going to have the same problems as if you had not constrained your masculine population. The difference is, what's the difference in male and female antisocial behavior? Well, that's, we know that. What's the difference in uh, male and female specialization? If you combine male and female specialization, right, with male and female antisocial behavior, it becomes really obvious what antisocial behavior has been scaled under our ability to scale to the inclusion of women who are who are a, uh, a consumer base and Jewish intellectuals who are a producer, right? And so now we've got this huge market that's expressing itself, because, just like the financial system is expressing itself immorally, the academy mm. is expressing itself immorally, and the bureaucracy is expressing itself more immorally. And to a large degree, the the uh, advertising industry is uh, and entertainment are put in, mm. right? because these are all things that profit from scale by uh, by 
justifying a low level acceptable, a low, a, a small scale in, uh, acceptable for, or forgivable action as a large mm. scale for business, forgivable action. And so this, this, uh, build, this fantasy, that, this problem is that we've allowed all this female, mm. feminine cognition to, uh, criminality to scale when they think it's okay. <laughs> right? um, except so, that scale it is okay it, except, except that, that scale. scale it is okay <laughs> i mean it's like uh ignoring ignoring the kind of nonsense nancy pelosi says right from your wife is okay that's right but not from a nancy it's not okay from a nancy right because then you're just licensing that kind of criminality if right. we got up uh, you got a trump a trump or i'm gonna have to use him you got a right. masculine equivalent of Nancy Pelosi up there, and he said, "Well, you need to you need to go out and do some vile raping and pillaging." I mean, that would be the same thing, right? Uh, so, I mean, that that it's just. Right. I hope I, I think I think in this conversation, I feel like I've done a better job. We've done. I, it's not me; it's you leading it. So let's be clear. He knows what he's doing. Um, uh, <laughs> Someone uh, has to be blamed. <laughs> <laughs> And I just feel this is one of the better conversations of male and female cognitive. Yeah, yes. Difference is because we're talking about how the scale problem manifests. Mm. And I think we already said, well, it starts out with uh, the genetics, right? I mean, just the formation of the neural organization of the brain. So this, I will tie it back a little bit. <clears throat> the um, The demonologists back in the day said the demon always calls, names his own de, um, destruct, destructor, okay? And it looks to me like the left and the feminine cognitive style has named its own destructor by saying it's okay to limit free speech. They are actually calling for limitations on free speech. And it's like, well, we should say yes. Why? For fucking once, you're right. And we just need to limit untruthful speech and that happens to be largely what you are pro projecting onto the public and we can therefore make it illegal because they have already de facto a priori agreed to it oh i see in principle they have agreed to the limitation of free speech and that is the beginning of the end when the right says you know you're right <clears throat> And so we have the we have now been justified in limiting their free speech when they lie. Yeah, uh, of course. The problem is uh, the word "lie" versus the lie, word "testimony," and the word "good" and "moral" versus reciprocity. So, um, what we have to do, what I've done, or what we've done, and what we have to do is uh say is it testifiable and is it reciprocal excuse me is it is it yeah is it uh testifiable is it reciprocal and does it is is it does it not bait into hazard and there the problem is they'll they have nothing to talk about anymore. what's that <laughs> Say that again, please. <laughs> we have nothing to talk about anymore. <laughs> I know. You know, so know. You, I'll add I'll add the, the damning, the damning thing. Okay. So why don't women invent anything? And why are it's Jews like... wait a minute? And why are Jews in all the business, all the industries that bait into hazard? Why were Jews the most literate people in history and produced nothing of consequence? Why are they in all the industries that bait in the hazard? And why do women never invent anything? And why are there no women at the extreme without works? Right. Well, the answer is the answer is that they don't create anything. They don't create anything. They generate demand. Whereas we do, we don't have a lot of demands as males and cognitive males. Just, uh, just throw the bone once in a while. And... Oh, I mean, they're not getting it that 
the the for us being happy is probably raping and pillaging. Yeah. Okay, and the only reason we don't rape, I'm gonna the make we don't rape and pillage, is because it's just more. It's it's easier not. To, it's easier to just get along, right, and, and make our women happy. So we're in other words, we can be more satisfied by fulfilling female demand than we can be by filling male demand. Even though, to be honest with you, if it weren't for pussy, uh, filling male, fulfilling male demand is a way lot more fun. So, you know, they don't ever think of the ill equation. It's like, one of the reasons they think teaching economics is the hydraulic model. Okay. Right? Uh, and so they show you that, because people have done this, right? They've, uh, this old, right? I can't remember where the one that's, the old one is sitting. It's like, it's not the Smithsonian, but it's something like that. But anyway, if you take a hydraulic system, right, you take just take a U-shaped tube, yeah, right. and, and, and you move one plunger, the other one moves. Yeah. Right? Well, you can do that with water in a whole economy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the point is, there's no way to move this plunger that way without forcing that plunger that way, right? Which is what human incentive drives, the same fucking thing. So for some reason, men understand this with what but women don't understand this event, or correctly, the female intuition doesn't understand this about men because they're it's hyper consumptive, whereas the male, uh, the masculine kind con uh, conception understands this about women because we're hyper capitalizing and we understand limits, and so what happens is is that we're like that's gonna that's gonna do that. That's what it means to say what if everybody did that. That's what hyperbole means, as if what if everybody did that. You're going to push this, but that's going to go that way. Or you're going to pull that, and that's going to go that way. The problem is, all of a sudden, what happens downstream? But all the other things that go up and down. That's right. So, so I mean, I was like, well, I mean, you women keep acting like this, and something, the, so, something's going to happen. Well, I'm kind of fascinated how fast the dating market is adapting right now. Fast. It's just amazing to me, because in other words, we get this we hit this new uh, date online dating shit and all this messaging crap and desocialization and false promise. It's like cat catalog marriages when you're disappointed that the bride you ordered is ugly, is a big nose. You know, I don't know. So uh, wait, because if wait, this is interesting because I'm now I'm relating it in my mind. I'm 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 reflecting on the ethers, okay, and it's like. See, the, 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 the issue is when you're talking about these hydraulic equations in an economic situation, so you draw here and it pushes this one down, right? Is is how fast is the signal travel? Yes. Is an ethereal question, right? Yep. And it's like, because there's going to be a vibration when I do this, it's going to send a vibration downstream. And it's like, how fast is it traveling and where does it go? And where is it going to make the next node up and the next node down? predictability and it's like the 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 fact of the matter is that look in human interaction sexuality is going to have the tightest ether yes because it's like this the dude is like <laughs> this is uh it's high demand mm -hmm. yeah i mean so we would expect the highest rate of the threat level, your ability to adapt to the threat or not adapt to it, right? The threat level, the adapt to it, and the number of people that are threatened. Yeah. That's the, the equation, right? It's pretty simple, pretty simple equation. And the, um, the symmetry of the threat. So if it affects all the classes, it's like war, it's going to spread faster than like an economic correction. Or inflation. Right. Inflation is fucking over the bottom. Classes right now, right? It's fucking all over for these people. Yes. But but then what's the difference between a, a stock correction? Well, I mean, that's gonna affect certain people and it affects us slowly. Yes. And uh let's say inflation fact fixes you, uh well, affects you, well, affects you relatively quickly, but you know, fucking missiles landing in your backyard. Affects you instantaneously. That's right. Yeah. Huh. Okay. 
I'm writing it all down because it tells us. But the the issue is this is uh, the it's like this ride the horse, and then for some reason that you can't figure out, he gets spooked and goes, what the hell, <laughs> right? And it's fast. It's super fast. Mm -hmm. And the whole herd will do it too. If he's in a group of, of other horses, they're all going to jump because there's a reason that one jumped. How fast do you react to burning? <laughs> you, you react faster than you can feel it. You, you, you're you unaware of it, right? It's, it's it cool. doesn't get, it doesn't, it travels to your um, spinal cord and then the motor signal goes back out before it gets processed up to pain. Exactly. So that's what it's like to be a prey animal. Um, Fast. Well, oh, okay, now I want to be a dick. Can I be a dick? Well, that's the difference from men and women. Is the response is faster, right? And so the men, we're like, we have this, we have a greater, greater suppression of oh, our signal. So the signal. Uh, because there's fewer there's fewer connections this way than this way, and so uh, we have more agency. In other words, the the competition we can put forward up here. Here's my head somewhere in there. Um, somewhere in there. The competition we can put forward in here is has a, a chance against the pressure going here and getting out. I mean, it's just pretty simple, really, right? It's just fucking hydraulics. Might as well explain it that way, too. So the, the problem with, again, we think of things in time. I don't say men. It's the masculine. I am trying so hard to fix that. You're you doing know, it, man. Uh, the, the, no, you're the, doing it. The masculine perception is really just more agency, right? And the feminine suppression is less agency. Right, and because you have more attention focused on more empathic, meaning short term experiential relations, right, and you have more fear because you have more integration. Whereas men have this, we have just less fear, or more, we have more predator side of the brain activity, and uh, it, it's simply narrower. So, women act like prey, the female mind acts more like a prey can't create animal then, whereas the male mind acts more like a predator animal because what do you think the two sides of the brain specialize in? Now we have, in order to get um, the bilateral being, you have to be able to time, you know, so that you can do this or this, swim through the, here's my flip fins. Can I have flippers? You know <laughs> That's nice. That's the origin, right? Um, so, <laughs> so I, I think I need, my subconscious is saying he's, talk doing, about, he's doing theater. Um, don't, don't talk about there. something funny because this is depressing. <laughs> well, that's what it's from, right? Isn't aren't yeah, it is. Yeah. So anyway, so you you, you get your hand. So you got to time this shit, right? So you can keep this because a worm doesn't have that problem, right? I mean, right, but you got to time this bilaterality in order to get motion. Well, uh, but over time, what what side takes dominance in this in the in the choice right it does the right and so what happens of course is that uh the brains do develops biases one toward um one toward uh uh yeah well, I'm told it, one toward um in time you know in, in other words in time the prey response and one over time the predator response and this is i haven't i should go get i can't recall the data I can't always remember everything because in the headspace I'm in. Um, but you know, this, there's this, this predator, like handedness, uh, predator behavior, um, bilateralism behavior, et cetera. Um, you have to get this specialization. So we got this specialization. Well, what happens in the female versus the male is there's a higher bias in the female mind to the prey response and a higher bias to the male mind and the predator response. And both of us have the social response. Right, which is that uh, we have the in-group in mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not it's just fucking wild. Right, I mean, it, it, that, that's why I think it's important because we got to continue to kill this blank shit, slate bullshit that should have been dead before 1999, right? It should have been dead before the year 2000. Mm -hmm. it's, still, it's still alive and well 
in the people who empathize because they can't imagine, they actually can't imagine another mind different from theirs, which is really what we mean by solipsism. <laughs> Then I jump off a cliff. Whenever I think about this shit in too much detail, right? I get so overwhelmed by the hopelessness of it. It's totally hopeful. I'm not hopeful. <laughs> I'm very hopeful. Anyway. All right. So yeah, we've done a good job on this. Like this, this is what I'm calling. I'm gonna call this episode to be among other fairy tales. Because <laughs> that's what that's what we're talking about, right? <laughs> It's just other fairy tales that the people prefer to believe, right? And the, the feminine mind can't imagine the masculine mind because it's nobody. Imagine, imagine thinking like Eli. It can't be done. A prey animal cannot imagine what it's like to be a predator animal. Or at least, at least the majority of them can't. The vast majority. That's of them. right. No, it's a bias. No, I did see this. I'm going to tell about a video that I watched one time, which was the water buffalo. <clears throat> the water buffalo calf got attacked by uh, a gator, and the gator's pulling the calf into the drink, and then the then a lion grabs the other half of the calf, and they have a tug of war. Lion gets the calf. But by this time, the other water buffalo are getting kind of irritable about this whole show. And uh, eventually, they did gather enough um, gumption to uh, gore the, uh, the lion, right? But it's, it took a while. But they were able to, to get over their innate fear of the lion, yes. which I thought was interesting because you don't see this. That and the water uh, buffaloes are mean bastards. But OK, yeah. <laughs> Especially when they're in a large group. <laughs> well, lion lived though and ran away. It was like, but it was impressive. It's like, what? A, but it, it comes down to this because it's the predator overcomes their own fear of having this interaction faster than the prey does. Mm -hmm. But the prey can overcome their fear of interaction in a physical way if they are pushed it to the uh, limits. Well, mothers will do crazy mm -hmm. shit. So it just. We've given how many goddamn examples now, and it's just one to call. <clears throat> right. The point is this: this is a. There's nothing. Oh, the one you were talking, I was thinking about who. Uh, who's that feminist, sort of feminist uh, author? God, I can't remember her name. It's not coming to me. Uh, God, everybody loves her. Anyway, can't think of it. And you, and the thing is, she thinks as clearly as, in other words, you, my point is, you can always tell if there's a white chromosome, if there's, a, if there's not a white chromosome present in, any, in someone's cognition, even in the most intelligent uh, uh, female uh, homosexual, right? uh, lesbian woman. I know who you're thinking of, and I don't remember the name. It's just Camille, Camille uh, Paglia. Paglia. And so, uh, what I like to do is get a guy like her, right? The same same level of competency, but gay, and you begin to see. In other words, even when the sex <clears throat> bias is changed, it doesn't it doesn't end the cognitive bias. And the the, the whole problem is, as intelligence goes up, you know, school goes up, competency goes up. It's easier for us to compensate. Because we tend to, you would merge at the rational level. Right? So the point I'm trying to make is, you can always tell the sex of an individual because it's ines it's inescapable, right? The the bias, the because at the some point all all uh, logic is intuition, right? It has to be right intuitive, right? Because it's, you can't introspect. On every property, you probably can if you work at it. Um, libertarians are better at it, right? Um, uh, but it becomes very difficult to understand uh, in um, to develop enough introspection to disambiguate, which is what we do, every single thing down to its first principles, so that you're making a decision. 
But even then, most, even if you could, the information necessary to have enough decision to not rely on a preference is almost impossible. Or if a preference could be involved, it will be involved. I'm saying something very profound now. I don't know if it's it it's is coming, true. It's coming across. Um, so the 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 masculine feminine difference is always present, even in people of whose because you are because hmm, sorry your your body develops first, your sexual organs second, and your emotional uh, your emotional by sex difference in uh, attraction last. And then your handedness, right? Last, 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 last. So, so when you realize that's ha that's a progressive part, um, you know, you're going to get a male and female body. You might get a body that has, you know, un an underdeveloped penis and a vagina, or some weird comment because that does happen, right? And then you, and then you could get a homosexual that's extremely opposite, or, uh, or only marginally. Right, you can get this whole difference. Um, so you get this entire spectrum, but no matter what happens, for some reason, that cognitive difference remains the same. Right, you, you can always tell it's a man, male or female. In other mm -hmm. words, an XX or an XY often. Mm -hmm. Might be hard. But go ahead, so you wanna answer that? Um, when you pause? No, I'm thinking about it. No, um, the 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 issue is it's the the cognitive bias, the, the cognitive bias, intuitive bias will always be present because it's invisible to the person who's making the decision. Without extraordinary work, right? Like what I always do is I do it the opposite way. If I know I'm intuiting it, I just assume I'm wrong. Right. Okay. Now, if I intuit that, and I can't reduce the first principle, I'm probably wrong. So that's what I look at. But that's not what people do. No, that's 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 a lot of work. That, that's it's it's only like I said, only crazy people do this, right? You could, no, <laughs> same, no sane person would do this. So, uh, you can't. <laughs> To realize that what you've done is very important, but you have to be ridiculous to do it. It's just, it's just one of those. It's like how how many ways can I be humiliate myself in one day? Shame the shame of it. <laughs> so where was I? I was going to make a point there. <laughs> You're about intuition and biases in decision making processes. All right. So you know you can do that, but I can go down and I can do that as like, but I'm just so conscious of those little quiet noises on the edge of my mind, right? I mean, because I've become increasingly attuned to, what, what, why did I come get there? What, and so you just listen to these, it's like you're listening to various quiet sounds in the forest, right? Trying to, did I really hear that or not? And then you go, okay, now this is what I, well, how did I get there? And you keep questioning that. Well, I mean, that's fucking, I mean, it takes forever, you know, you don't, you, we have to live in real time. Not everybody's got OCD. And, <laughs> and, and other problems with the universe. <laughs> so, so, so you get down in here and you're like, okay, well, well people can't do that. They can't distinguish it. But they, they, so the, you think you've come to the, pro, the logical conclusion, but what you've done is just exhausted two things, your knowledge and experience and your mm. re recursive introspection. Um, you know, I can. So there's explain. Yes, there's I can, limits. The limits are knowledge, time, and and how much work you can put into it. All right, how much you can. So, well, my friend, a uh, female friend of mine, who I'm, I think I'm, she's one of the most wonderful women I've known. Um, I haven't talked to her in a long time. Raised properly by her father and brothers, seems to be the con the the common factor. Good brothers, good father, non crazy woman. Hmm. Seems to be the, the common factor. Um, so anyway, she says, I, I come to a conclusion. In other words, I come to a conclusion, then I have to figure out how I got, why, you know, in retrospect, how I got there. Right? 
And we don't realize that all of us have to do that. Yes. <laughs> right. And so the difference between people is that they come to a conclusion. And the thing I notice most commonly is they come to the first new conclusion and they assume that's the answer to the A new answer is the best answer, although yes. it's just the next it's answer. It's just the next answer. Right. And then you have to say, okay, what's the next one? So so uh what you see a lot in in the, the the it's the whatever is below the midwits <laughs> is okay. <that. laughs> okay and then below that there is no conclusion <laughs> cannot be concluded uh, oh my um, um, there's only invitation that's so, right so uh midwit, uh, midwit nitwit and no wit i guess is probably the right Wit, wit, midwit, nitwit, no wit. I guess would be. I don't know. I gotta. I'd have to talk to what's his name. Who's the Brit with the dark hair? Um, oh, Russell Brand. No, no, Brand. no. The, oh God, I just why can't I remember the name this morning? I can see <clears> it. <throat> oh, fuck. Anyway, the guy that lives in lives in uh, uh, the the Baltics, and he. Oh, I know who it is. Yes. Uh, sure. He lives in um, Finland. Yeah, his name is... <laughs> I can't do it. I don't know. The, um... Oh, my. Now I'm, I'm going to have to look. You know, it's embarrassing. Because I've been on a show. I know the yes, guy. Yes, you have. Uh, you have. Uh, and what's interesting is the after-show conversation. Okay. Was, uh, well, he asked some very smart questions. After. Oh, professor. He's a professor. Ed I'm looking. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Ed, Ed Dutton. Just took a second there. Sorry. I had to, I had to get out of whatever rat hole I was in. Um, took a minute. Uh, Dutton is very good at this. I'd have to ask him, well, how do we, how do we go from Midwit, you know, wit, mid I mean, there must be some fucking hierarchy of wits that we can create as a system of measurement to explain this. But nitwit, midwit, wit, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure he's thought about this to some degree. Uh, uh, now I've lost my train of thought again. Sorry. Uh, we we're going into, okay, so sex differences. So my point is that hmm. uh, this has ended up being um, quite an interesting discussion. And uh, in in uh, sex differences in cognition and how difficult it is to overcome it and um, how so only if, and, and we have to realize that people can't necessarily overcome it because they can't necessarily give them, put in the work and if they could put in the work they may not have the ability of recursive introspection to do it right. because we know people lose their logical facility rather rapidly in other words they lose everything other than First order logic, which is pattern recognition, especially when they're under stress. Yes. So, uh, so in essence, we're back to the original. The original problem is that what we feel we need to do is educate people across the spectrum as best we can, so they have the same facility with the cognitive behavioral sciences, which is probably all the same cognitive behavioral sciences, uh, as they do with the physical sciences. And uh, if I, in my perfect world, please, uh, we will. I will get people to understand the grammars. And if I can get to people to understand the grammars, then it becomes all of a sudden lying becomes a truth and falsehood become a very interesting thing, right? And then, if you want, do I believe we can get people to tell the difference between testifying, storytelling, and easily? I, I think we can. And I, I think at that point, you've now made it possible for the more of the public to understand how difficult, how different people think, mm -hmm. how, how immutable their thinking is. Yes. How to explain their thinking. And then once we've done that, we've gotten closer to eliminating lying, cheating, stealing, wishful thinking, loading, framing, deceiving. And we can find means of cooperating through trades, most of those trades will continue and always be the people who are productive, who have agency and conscientiousness, 
and the people who are unproductive lack agency and conscientiousness, right? And that will be the distribution uh, because that's really the temporal division of labor. And we're going to have a sex bias in that distribution because the temporal division of labor is what the sex bias represents. I mean, it's just the brain, can, nature doesn't have one of the things I, I've got to get better at this. Nature doesn't have a way to remember things. Yes. So it's, it can only remember A to B, right? Uh, it can't remember Y. <laughs> and it's like, why are there three dimensions? I tried to explain that to somebody else, but I think I got it across. Well, why are the why are the three rotations to a Rubik's cube? It's fucking obvious. Um, why are there uh, three dimensions to the universe? Why, um, you know, why are there only two sexes? Uh, why are there only three means of coercion? Well, it's because the you need a you need another dimension of retaining information. Nature hasn't got a way of doing. It. In other words, you need consciousness to get there. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, you just did a bad thing, sir. Did I do a wrong bad thing? You did. You what just happened? invoked a ghost. Consciousness. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. You need memory to do that. There you go. Now, memory is not the same as consciousness. No, no. I was like, wait a minute. What did he catch me at? Oh, yeah, shit, he's right. I hate it when you're right. Have I told you that before? I appreciate that. I, I. No. Enjoy I want you to know how much I enjoy your hatred, sir. <laughs> <laughs> how odd is that? Yeah, it's funny. So it's, it's memory. Well, you need memory. to, And the only reason you need memory is to be able to do uh, prediction so you can do repetition. And so once you have memory, you have a means of storing information that's uh, because it's predictive, it's causal. So I mean, that's the difference. And it creates the illusion of consciousness. Well, I mean, uh, no, I don't know. Consciousness has a meaning, and it, mean, and it has an origin. And consciousness is uh, different from sleepwalking. Right? So sleepwalking is what you would be like if you weren't conscious. You can interact with the world around you, but at the level of consciousness, now I can predict your thinking. So consciousness is a, is a need for social interaction. Ah. Right? Because it requires a model, the a model social, another mind. Social agency. Well, it's modeling another mind. I guess social agency is probably another way. Of, you know, that's a probably label for it, or the the utility of it, even though the the uh, the operational description is modeling another mind. That's where consciousness comes in. Now, are you conscious when you're sleepwalking? We say no. Right. You're somewhat conscious. Uh, low level of consciousness. Right. So that's why people say consciousness is a spectrum from awareness to full consciousness. And so I, I just try to say, well, let's let's try to disambiguate that into consciousness, um, uh, awareness, oh, uh, and then whatever sleepwalking is. I like that as a, a vaguely hypnotic state. Might actually be. I might have it the other way around. It might be. Uh, I haven't thought about this. It might be consciousness awareness. I think that might be the axis and what be what's happening as recursion. That's probably what it is. It's a degree of recursion. Oh, I see. That's right. I'll probably forget that, but that's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down so that so that you don't have to remember. <laughs> Neither do I. The difference is, <laughs> as you increase along the axes, both axes, you, you have increased recursion. Yeah, it's just more recursion. So what's happening is you're building up uh, the number of connections you're making and auto-associations, creating a more elaborate model. It's like when I tell people, when you look at a bear, try to remember yourself sleepwalking. Because that's how they, that's about the level of thinking they've got. Right, uh, they don't really think too much, right? Remember, remember, bear is a big thing, so it's got the brain the size of a cat, right? And so there, there, there's, you know, there's something going on there, and it's not too much. But uh, <laughs> not that they're stupid; it's just they live in a world 
where they don't need to be aware, right? Uh, um, and if they aren't, because why? Well, I mean, who's going to fight them? Right? If they can't smell it, it's probably not a danger. And if it gets close enough to be a danger, it's one of them, right? I mean, it's just what the hell's it got to be afraid of? So, what does it need consciousness for? <laughs> it's not very useful. So it can achieve consciousness the way we can come out of sleepwalking and into full of consciousness, right? But what is their visual resolution, right? What is their information processing? It's a lot lower. Right. It's like, you know, black, I don't want to say black and white TV, but it's like, you know, low, a, 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 a highly pixelated view of the universe, right? Um, <clears throat> so I try to say, try to think of it in that terms, but uh, it's, it, you know, you need a, to do what humans do you need a lot of fucking neurons, right? Over a really long recursive hierarchy. I mean, I'm, I, the joke I make is like, you know the alien monster, it's like its head is that long? Yeah. I think about if you could have that many, re if recursion takes on our brain, I think it takes two fingers. Yeah. Okay. Right? It's like two, two, two fingers or three fingers worth of width, depending on what it's doing, right? So, um, Oh my god! I just thought of a lot of really bad things. I gotta not say. <laughs> <laughs> but think if you're like this, the alien creature that heads that long, right. and you can process that many recursive, right? Wait, that wait, many, wait. I mean, you could not think that fucking thing, and you know, it just never happened. You had that first, you know, it's like the same thing as why to why don't we digest food faster? We'd light on fire. Right. Um, uh, it's the same thing as how, why don't we have a brain that big? Because, because we'd light on fire. Right. It takes that many. You have gallons. to eat too much. <laughs> you can't get enough food in there. You can't do it without developing a stomach that would have, right? It's just a terrible problem of lighting on fire. You look at what an elephant and you say, oh, now I get it. <laughs> big thing, huge brain. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, now I get it because you have to you have to eat that much and you have to be that big to eat that much. You know, fascinating. I'm sorry, but you're going another direction. So it's like this: the um the the sleepwalking thing is interesting to me because there's a um there's a process that people people I run into the older people they'll come to the office and they're like um they're worried they're getting Alzheimer's because um they um forgot where they were going. And ended up going to a different place. And I'm like, that's not, that's just automatic driving. Yeah, that's nothing. Which is you were focusing your attention on something and your brain was in a, like a sleepwalking state while you were driving and you weren't paying attention to driving except for what was minimally required to not hit other stuff, stay in the lane and go kind of where your brain thought you were going, but it was mistaken because you were distracted and passed the turn. Yeah. Um, People do that every age. That's right. right. Well, yeah, that's what you talk. Right, about. But only becomes concerning when they're older because then it starts getting irritating because it's like maybe I do have Alzheimer's. I don't know. The thing you notice, uh, all thing you notice with um, what I notice with little people is that um, one <laughs> is your eyesight is fifty percent of your neurons. So it's huge. Fifty percent of your fifty percent of your nervous system. And so uh, that is, if you start to lose your eyesight, it's a greater, it really has an effect on your neural associations. And so this tends you to drive you a little bit more into your imagination and your mind. Yes. And so you will get some of these effects. It's not your brain. It's that your brain can't get the information to exercise as well as, you know, disambiguate the world as as much as being as present as you wish to be right this is the reason you want to stay busy right you want to stay busy regardless of your eyesight if you got eyesight you want to read anyway you want to stay busy because what you're really trying to do is neurons that get exercise get fed and neurons that get fed stay healthy and it's, it's like when people say stay busy, they're, they're not. They're, it's, <laughs> there's not a lot of difference between a muscle fiber 
<laughs> and a set of dendrites really it doesn't make, make a lot of difference. Exercise is what matters. That's good it. advice. That's like advice. Go ahead. That's basic advice for everybody. I know there's an insult to throw out to someone there somewhere, and I, I don't know. This doesn't want to happen to me. It's all right. <clears throat> okay, so I wanted to. Uh, are we done with your? You sure? Yes, sir. Um, I had a. I was, the, I was thinking that uh, the Sam Hughes. Feminine cognition tied into this area. Is that Sam Hughes? No. Sam Harris. Oh, Harris, yeah. Sam Hughes is a friend of mine. Sorry, Sam. Didn't mean that. They have nothing. Have enough, and they're nothing alike. I tell Sam you. Hughes, Sam Hughes looks like you. Had a boy. Good, Good looking devil, is he? <laughs> um, I'm mad at Sam Harris. I was watching him talk to um, Bill Mayer. I know is he, he's just he he has made himself utterly ridiculous by his 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 he's demonstrating his his projection and silliness publicly and he's not ashamed of it and it's like it's like he's not very intelligent if he thinks that that's okay it's it, like it's anti free speech you know just just wildness like it's his wow. feminine his feminine tradition and so what's happened is this is the problem and I've I've been thinking about this because he's such a good example. And he's a popular enough example is increases in feminine cognition only uh, increase the sophistication of the loading, framing, suggestion, obscuring, and storytelling. And so you wonder why Sam sounds his way and I sound mine. It's because I'm I'm testifying and he's storytelling. So what really turns out to all his arguments well down to I feel this way, and I'm right. <laughs> right, and 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 you must be some kind of bad person because only a bad person like me would make that an argument that you just made. That's what you're calling testimonial truth. Right, but it's like you know, the Paul Krugman. I mean, mm. the, to, to, the Paul Krugman's lies are so elaborate. I'd have to take you down. I mean, it's like I have to give a class. Or a fucking uh, New York Times article he wrote. I mean, the number of lies he's combining together in there is just amazing to me. And this is, you know, Sam is does Sam is Sam uses a very simple technique, but he uses so much of it via storytelling. So you know, you, you, there are great examples of you don't have to be female. I mean, you don't have to be a woman, a female, to use the feminine method. You just have to co be cognitively feminine. Well, what does cognitively feminine buy you? It buys you detail, and it buys you a, a verbal acuity, which is what we see in Sam, um, which is what we see in Paul Krugman, is, is the ability to work with detail and develop verbal acuity. Well, what, what does the institutional education reward? It rewards detail and verbal acuity because it's testable. But is this important? It's testable. But it is it have anything to do with prediction? No. And so right. you, you, we get the confused by verbal acuity ah. and, and precision as if it's the same thing as testifiable and predictable. When Wait, it's just, want, may I make an interjection? Sure. It's like this is it, the... Uh, this is the first principle of why the academies have gone feminine cognition. See, the way the, the way our academies arose originally was if your family was good enough to hold social position, you were loyal. Right? Yep. To, the, to the state, the polity, whatever you want to call it. Right? And so our, our aristocracy, lesser aristocracy, uh, no, aristocracy, no lesser aristocracy, nobility, and upper middle class, these people had demonstrated loyalty to the composition of families. And so it was it was a balance between their competency and their loyalty. Right? It makes sense. And the but a families 
intergenerational preservation of competency is a de the first organization. In other words, the family, right? The family is the first organization. Hmm. Right? So they're showing that they can scale a family. Right. Just as it's one thing to be in, to be a farmer, it's another to produce uh, farming at scale. And same thing with a business, an industry, or a village, or a polity, a nation. Right? And right. so what happened is that we went from, you needed to, largely your pathway was military, was academy and, uh, and church, or, which was, again, a moral venture, or uh, military and academy, right? mm -hmm. or, or, or industry regardless of academy, or um, military regardless of academy or industry. In other words, you had to demonstrate competency in those three spheres right? Or one of these things. And the church was technically a wing of government. So you've got to demonstrate competency in family, industry or military because these are all real that's right they're not imaginary well they they uh, that is your competency versus credentials yes and so what happened uh what happened during the uh just after the second world war was this tendency to need so many educated people to fight the soviets and so we were, took the German model of education, et cetera. And so we started putting people into the academy and we created a bias for credentialism. And by the end of the Vietnam War, the credentialists had been successful by using the media and disintermediating the military from the government. So it did not take them long. It took them from 1940, maybe even a little bit earlier, because of the Soviets had a part of this, right? The success of the Soviet uh, uh, intellectual movement and the failure of the church. Both these work together to provide incentives to do this. So we were trying to uh, create this, uh, create more technology to win. You know, we did it, but we did it at the expense of filling government. Uh, it only max, it only reached its perihelion with um, its maximum. With uh, with uh, it started to get bad with with uh, Clinton. And it was the worst under Obama, and I'm uh, I, I can't even tell what it is today, but it looks ridiculous. Day under, I mean, we have very bizarre people in government. Um, so I, I I just uh, I'm like the, it, it's midwits. So, so credentialism and normativity, excuse me, uh, ab credentialism and abnormativity have replaced. Uh, have replaced competency and normativity and loyalty. And so the state is largely organized. In other words, the credential system is largely organized to produce a new clerisy that's ideal, utopian, and, uh, theor and uh, hypothetical, I guess. Whereas in pre prior to the, prior to the, uh, certainly prior to 1960, whatever, Kennedy was elected. It was, we were certainly in the um, uh, credentialed, excuse me, the, the, the loyalty uh, demonstrated competency. And you can see this by the composition of, uh, of each of you know, the government, and you can see it by the competent, in other words, the elect people who are elected, and you can see it moreover in the people who are uh, in the cabinet. Whereas prior to, prior to the top American Revolution, which is really uh, Johnson's, John, Johnson only really gets real. Kennedy starts to get bad, but Johnson gets really bad. Uh, prior to this time, uh, what you've got is uh, the, the traditional European model with that's a little uh, thrown off by the transfer of power from England to America by the Second World War. You've got a little chaos going on there. And it just seems like the credentialists won. And the credentialists won largely because women are so willing to pay for shit education. You know, social science, you know, pretense of momhood, 
non-STEM courses. But the second thing is we don't require military service for government participation. When I, as far as I can tell, if you can't haven't got a family, right? You haven't married a family, you haven't served in government, you haven't got a family, uh, and you're not self-supporting. Uh, there's no reason you should have an opinion because it's not so important that everybody get in, right? It's more important that nobody bad get uh, everybody bad gets left out. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't want to call them bad if we're taxing them. Well, you're pay you're paying that tax for the system that you're in. You're not paying that tax because you're competent at anything else, right? You're paying taxes for the, to derive the benefit. And we can tell that people, most people in those classes that I didn't include, the unmarried, the unserved, et cetera, uh, without the un the people without demonstrated competency. You can, when you look at them, you say, well, you don't ever pay taxes anyway. You're a net consumer of taxes, even though you're paying some taxes. The net result is, is everybody else is supporting you anyway. So mm -hmm. you're not supporting them. You know, you're de decreasing your burden yes. on others. So uh, somebody's sending me, I'm getting a lot of, but I don't know what I'm getting. I'm getting a lot of alerts like there's some weird thing going on um, but somewhere. I don't know. I don't have to pay attention to it, uh, but it's just annoying me back then. So, so, so uh, this is this goes to this universal basic income premise, which suggests that maybe we should give a universal basic income and not have charge any taxes. And then when I exclude them from participation, nobody will be, have anything to bitch about. Well, this is very interesting topic. So there are three hundred and twenty million dollars people. Yeah. Well, the government collects $3.2 trillion. I'm going to, this is. So it's like $1,000. What? Say it again? It's like $10,000 per capita. Right. And so, uh, and we spend four. <laughs> okay. And we can only spend that four, that extra trillion which is why I say it's free, our military is free, right? Our, the, our, the military is free because of demand for the dollar, right? The dollar is reserve quality. So right. when I tell you our military is free, I'm not fucking kidding, right? So uh, the demand for the dollar is what pays for that. Now, and it also is what gives us I mean, you think about, I'm not going to go there, but think about what losing a quarter of our federal revenue. Oh, yeah. So uh, so that's a meaningful thing. Part of my strategy for fixing our government. Was it going to be fixing and overthrowing? I don't know. Is uh, to be aware of this, of this bit of blackmail. Um, but anyway, the uh, of that, that money there, right, that's produced, uh, we're left the three, two, whatever. But, you know, of around, you know, excuse me, out of the whole budget, the round, and this isn't right. This is, I'm trying to keep numbers around, right? It's like the third for the military, a third for, right, uh, right. Uh, you know, all Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, a third for discretionary. And out of discretionary, it's not really true, right? There's, so, um, shit. What? How? What was the question I was on? You asked me. Dollars. No, I didn't forget. Taxes. Taxes. Universal basic. Universal income. Income. So, um, so the problem is that we're only collecting ten thousand dollars per person. Right. Uh, right. So the problem is, is that that money's that if 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 you say okay, well, how many of those people are actually going to get universal. I mean, it eats up a tremendous, it's worse than Social Security. Oh, yeah. All right. And where's that money going to come from? Now, they think right. it's somewhere. If you, they say, well, tax the corporations. Do you realize that there? it looks great to see, to see these billion-dollar corporations, but is this many of them? Right? And if you take that to those corporations, what are they going to do? They're going to go somewhere else. 
why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I move Microsoft to India? It's basically an Indian company now. Why wouldn't I just take Microsoft to India? You know, what's going to be the growth in America? America versus that? Look at where Microsoft makes its money. I was just looking at that this morning. You know, it makes it in you know, Azure and LinkedIn, right? Uh, these are worldwide things. Well, sure, they make their money out of Office and et cetera, but you know, they make a lot of money around this planet. Right? Hmm. Why don't they go to India where the labor is shorter and they have entire, they have a billion techno, a billion people to draw from. That's sort of turn them, oh, why not? Uh, uh, same for a bunch of companies. Why, why not just go somewhere else? All right? Well, that's what happened when the unions tried to get more money out of companies. They just went, they took, the companies took, put their business where unions couldn't drive, drive them into bankruptcy. And the companies that didn't move, GM, Ford, and Chrysler, they get slaughtered because of their unions and their pensions. Mm -hmm. right? Because the, the difference in the price of cars right now and the quality of price of cars is largely due to the fact that they have unfunded liabilities that you know that they're paying and that that's driving up the price of the car enough to make it on price price uncompetitive without mm -hmm. decreasing quality. So, I'm not sure. I uh, I haven't looked at that data since before 2000. Mm. I might be I might be off a little bit, but. I'm just not that interested in that part. I understand. I respect the limits of interest. Uh, so, well, I mean, it's, my work is more in law now, and I—that's right. I, I have to keep track of aggregate numbers and behavior, and I don't have to so much worry about what's what sector is doing that. So, right. um, but look at their—you know—how are they going to invest money in electric vehicles, right? Right. How are they going to do that? Right, so uh, you know, I'm just trying to give the response of how how are they going to do that when they've got all these burdens? So you can't just tax and tax and tax and have the American miracle. Right? That's right. We're we're about at the limit of it right now, and Trump was right to reduce those taxes so that we could repatriate these companies. But we may have to reduce them more to repatriate more country companies to produce more produce more labor. Um, so uh, you can't just tax it. So how, where the fuck are you going to come with this? If you want to give people a thousand dollars a month, right? That's the first thing. Where the hell is that money going to come from? Right? I mean, it has to come from the middle class. I thought the middle class is suffering already. Oh, they are. Right. So who the fuck are you going to take it from? That's an answer to this question. Uh, uh, you know, you could reindustrialize. I think that's what's occurring. Right, you can reindustrialize, and then you might be able to get more out of it. But right now, you can't until we reindustrialize. So, okay, now you say, "Well, I want to give that." This is, this is here's my, I'm I'm leading up to the the nasty. Right. Okay? So when I go into, if you go into a, a, a I've forgotten the name of the fact it touched you. In, in, uh, if you go into a city, and I open up, let's say, an Amazon warehouse in the city, and I raise, and because it's that's a really bad example. Mm -hmm. Amazon is really bad. I'm trying to think of something else. If I open up a factory in a, in a, in a city, right? And I pay those people way above market rage, wages. Where does their increase in wage go? That's right. It goes into housing prices and rental prices. So is there any dip? If I give those people more money, what have I just done? I've raised, I've made sure the people who own houses yep. and rent properties absorb yep. all the increase. Money. That's right. So all increases in wages are eventually absorbed by increases in housing and rent and housing, whether rental or properties. And ergo, why are you poor if you live in San Francisco and make 250 grand a year? Because all increases in wages. It's the same thing as why do I live? Why didn't I to take that job? I mean, I was like 23 years old. I got a job for this is a long time ago, right? I'm fucking old. Right? I got a job offer for I was like hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year to run mm -hmm. a company. I was a young kid, right? I was a bit of a star in this particular industry, but so no one twenty three. I was more than 24, 24, 25. 
125 or 130 thousand dollars a year to go live in Manhattan and run this business. And I'm like, but I started to figure out the money is like I was making, I might as well be making 60 anywhere else in the country. Right. Because I, I would actually have a lower standard of living than I would if I, than I did at 80,000. Right. Because the cost of living, well, it's density increases, density mm -hmm. decreases opportunity costs, which draw people in, which increases, which increases that. Where in those draw people, they track businesses, which then pay higher salaries to compete for more people, which ends up in. So the only winners are government taxation. The financial okay. sector and lending, how, how, the people who own a house and experience its appreciation, first on, and the uh, renter, rent people who uh, collect money to own rental properties. That's right. where all the money goes. So now, let's take this thing and say, I'm going to give all these poor people an extra $1,000 or $2,000 a month. Where's the money going to go? Rental I know. properties. I, yeah. I, I I won't dispute it because it goes to this this equation again. Yes, always. I'm just I gonna, it's, right. So so it's actually the wrong answer, and the Soviets believe I had the right answer. What's well, the Soviet answer that you prefer? It's that you uh, give housing, right? You you say housing is almost free, right? But your re behavioral requirements for that housing are really, really strict. It's about the same answer. <laughs> it's the same answer. You want the um do you want the um the income that's gonna go to housing or do you want the house? You're still gonna have the behavioral constraints demanded. Correct. But the and the great thing about this model is so the basic problem is the difference in wages in the countries. Yes. How much distorted is that? Yes. So one of the reasons I don't like Europe is I don't like VAT because it distorts right. prices. Whereas income tax, with the, I know we don't like income tax, but it doesn't distort the economy. Whereas every other tax distorts the economy, even sales tax. What you want to do is have the least distortion in the economy, which keeps it is as competitive as possible in the world economy. And you want to tax only the end product. In other words, the actual- Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like a, a, a sales tax. Sales tax is is pretty good because it's called a consumption tax. Yep. It's pretty good, um, except that it, it, um, it hurts the poorest people most. In other words, the people with the least ability. Um, and we've tried to ameliorate that in the United States by making clothes and food. And okay. It should, be back to, it should be a bunch of things. Uh, tax, tax free. Um, uh, so we try to get around the sales tax problem by making necessities uh, tax free. Um, but uh, consumption. But anything like the problem with VAT tax is every time it changes hands. So the number is so, it's stupid. And they're so proud of it. And I'm like, I don't know why you're proud of it. It's the worst fucking tax. It's mm -hmm. the most distorted. Well, their problem is because there's so much integrated trade between so many governments, it allows local capture. Right? That's, it, what they're, that's what it's for, I think. That's, that's what it's for is local capture. But it's still the worst tax. There you have it. So That's uh, final word the, on that one. The, the best one is income tax, you know, and because it can be scaled, it can be manipulated. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff you can do, and you know, it's like a lot of a lot of. I mean, I know because I've played this game. It's like, well, you know, at some point you just don't fucking care. You know, you no, know, it's just it's just protection racket, and I'm on base if I pay, so I pay. Well, Not yeah, no. You know, there, there's there's a point. The, the reason you care uh, if you're wealthy, right, and you run an industry, is it affects your competitive ability of the industry. Therefore, it's not your income, right? For affecting your, it's the the entire fucking pyramid, right, and network of pyramids that relate to you that you're thinking about. And the average idiot thinks, well, that guy's making a billion dollars. Well, I mean, it's not the billion dollars I make. It's the eighty billion dollars or the trillion dollars. That's in this network should be affected if I can't maintain competitive advantage. 
right? right. So, so, so he he's thinking about well, you know, I've got to make this in order to make that happen, and I've got to extract this much capital in order to make sure I have the capital reserves to invest in other places. You know, I mean, that money's out there. They think like this: if I'm a billionaire, I have the money in my fucking safers or in a bank. <laughs> you don't. Well, you re- here's what you really do. So that's so what we all do, right? Anybody who's not us, you go out and you say, "Okay, I've got like, you know, a billion dollars in assets." So you take it a hundred million dollar credit line, all right? And then you live off the credit line. You never, you don't need any, right? You, right. you, you right? You live off the credit line, and then you use your income to pay the interest of the credit line. But then you can deduct the interest, right? I mean, so that's what people do. That's why you have a house. That's why you buy a mansion if you're rich, is so that you can for tax, as tax purposes, right? So, so like you're just encouraging. That's all this weird stuff that happens when you interfere with natural incentives. But I mean, I mean, the truth is, is that you know Elon Musk is a great example. He just paid what fifteen billion dollars in taxes last year or something like that. Right? I mean, a lot of people. I mean, I certainly. I don't know. I've paid billions of dollars in taxes. I, you don't. I don't care. I don't. Care. What I care about is you make my life shit, or you're making you're taxing me so that I can't compete in this market against a foreign company. That's what you care about. It's not. It's people think it's the money. Like it's you know, the the money is a vehicle for doing something because you know we right. all, you really can't spend more than three hundred fifty grand a year. You just can't. You have to be. You have to have something wrong with your head. <laughs> you really do. I mean, you buy a boat. You know, you buy a fucking yacht. Well, I mean, you buy a seven hundred and fifty million dollar yacht. Why do you have that? Yeah, well, because it's a place to put the money that I have control over. That right. at least isn't going to vaporize. And the real reason you buy a yacht is so I can get the fuck away from other people. Right? I mean, that's the reason you buy a yacht. Get it. And then you get a certain club. You know, a certain club. That club means you can associate with certain people, and a certain associate with certain people grants you opportunities, certain opportunities. Mm-hmm. So the, you act like these things aren't don't have value, but because they're not they're not price value, you don't realize that. All you know, I mean, I remember telling my wife, I was, "I'm going to buy the Jaguar." And she says, why? We don't need a fucking Jaguar. We got an Audi. And I says, because I can take customers around on a fucking car. And so I don't really need a Jaguar. I like my Audi just fine. <laughs> you know, but you know, it's that kind of shit, right? Why do you need a Ferrari? Because it gets laid every fucking time. <laughs> it's, it's a vehicle that gets currency, gets the, the primary currency. In the passenger seat, <laughs> you know, I was like, and then there's other things. It's like I, I just like, you know, it, it is, as soon as a company gets to be above eighty or hundred million dollars, it's actually no fun anymore. It's, it's it, in other words, not as private. Like you have to be someone like Musk or Gates. And I'm like these guys, but I can't work that hard. It's not a matter of anything else. You've just got to work on that one. I mean, fucking must look at a fucking space company. And, you know, huh. no, I, just can't, I, I can't, I just can't, I can't change context that often. Right. I just can't do it. I'd have a nervous breakdown. It's not like the, the problem isn't that hard. Right. But I mean, you know, you get you work, you sit in a room with Gates and the fucking guy, he's like Bill Clinton. This is another example of the opposite. Right. The fucking guy can work like 20 hours a day on four hours of sleep. I mean, you just can't defeat that that shit, right? I mean, I just can't, I mean I can work I can work 18 hours a day, right? But I'm not I can't switch contexts more than once or twice. <laughs> so, you know, right? I mean, too hard on too, I'm gonna have three or four meetings a day, and after that I'm like, I I, I just need some quiet time. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, we're all, we have to be able to do that. So you know, you you can't you can't just look at these guys and say we're going to do this program because 
because the, the money isn't going to get to people anyway. It's going to end up in other people's hands. And it's right. going to, uh, there's no way to pay for it that I can see. And what if we did that, how many people would jump on it that aren't that aren't that are at the margins today? You know, tens of millions. So I mean, I mean, they, they look at France for Christ's sake. Look at their look at their permanent unemployment rate. I mean, the number of people who've never had a job and never will. Right? I mean, they're they're stuck in indefinite poverty. The same argument is why do we need a minimum wage? So we need a minimum wage sufficient. So that people can go to work, All right? In other words, but if it's if you say a living wage, it's not meant to be a living wage. It's meant to be I live with five kids, five, five other guys in a house wage, uh, or I live with at home wage until I've figured out how to add more value than a minimum wage requires. Right. It's not meant to be a living wage because what you're doing the minute it's a living wage is you're blocking people from entering the economy, right? That. By holding a job that's oh you're overpaid for, which is the only purpose of which is to filter people in and out of the economy, or basically make um, teach people how to behave in right. a rich environment. Okay, did I? Sure, we nailed it. You nail it. Sorry. We have to leave some stuff to talk about tomorrow. I think I'll, I'll do a good. I, I didn't think we we're going to have anything to talk about today. Oh, we did great. We did great today. All right, we can shut down now. We can, but we will uh, we'll reintroduce the episode. Is episode two zero nine eight? Hit like and subscribe, and leave detailed comments, notification bells, etc. And tell us what you think. What's the name of this thing? That you have? I called this episode uh, among other fairy tales. <laughs> All right, I love you, man. Have a I appreciate you, and I'll look forward to chatting with you tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Hopefully I'll be prepared tomorrow. Bye-bye. Oh, we'll see about that. <laughs>